Hey everyone, welcome to Quick Silicon. In this video, we would be discussing the sequence generator problem. This is an interesting problem as most of the times we are asked to detect a sequence, but in this problem, we need to generate one. The other interesting thing is that we don't get any inputs other than the clock and the reset, which for a lot of people can be a bit confusing. So let's look into the problem statement and try to understand on how we can design a sequence generator. The problem statement specifies that our design should produce the following sequence of numbers as I have here. The sequence is basically 0, followed by 3 times 1, followed by 2 times 2, then 3, 4, 5, 7, 9 and so on. The problem also mentions that the sequence would not overflow a 32-bit value. This implies that the circuit would probably get reset before we reach the maximum value for a 32-bit number. This information is helpful as we now know that our output should be 32-bit wide. That is all the problem statement specifies and we are now required to design the sequence generator. A common method to design a sequence generator is to come up with a pattern where the next number can be generated by using the numbers already seen in the previous cycle. This is because we can easily store the number generated in the past few cycles and use them to generate the next number. Let us quickly add the clock cycle information to the above sequence as this would be helpful to find the relationship between these numbers. On clock cycle 1, the output is 0. On clock cycle 2, we get a 1. Similarly, for other clock cycles and so on. It would be slightly difficult to come up with a relationship for the first three values as these just consist of zeros and ones. But these zeros and ones is a probable hint that these values may be derived from the reset values of certain flops. Let's hold on to that information, we'll probably use it later. From cycle 5 onwards, the sequence basically is 2 followed by 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. Since this is an increasing sequence, it is again a hint that the next number in the sequence is formed by some sort of an addition of the already generated numbers. Let's try to come up with a pattern to form the next number in the sequence by using the past generated numbers. We'll start from cycle 5. So on cycle 5, the output is 2. We can form this output by either using the information on cycle 4 and cycle 3 or cycle 2 and cycle 3. Let's write both of that down. So we can get 2 by adding the information obtained on cycle 2, which was the number 1, plus the number seen on cycle 3, which is again a 1. And we can also generate it by using the number generated on cycle 3, plus the number generated on cycle 4. So on cycle 6, the output again is 2. So this can again be formed by adding the numbers generated on cycle 3 plus the number generated on cycle 4. On cycle 6, we generated numbers using the information on cycle 3 and cycle 4. So we have gone up to 3 cycles back. So let's try to get all the other numbers generated by going up to 3 cycles back. So on cycle 7, the output is 3. So if you go three cycles back it would be on we were on cycle seven so it would be one two and three so we can use the information on cycle four and cycle five in order to generate the number on cycle seven which is three so we get one from cycle four plus two from cycle five on cycle eight the output is four which we can generate by using the information on cycle 5 plus the number generated on cycle 6. Okay, so I think we have a pattern here. In order to generate the next number, what we are basically doing is that we are adding the number seen 2 cycles and 3 cycles before the current cycle. For example, in cycle 9, 
the output would be the number generated on cycle 6 plus the number generated on cycle 7. So which would be basically number generated on cycle 6 was 2 plus the number generated on cycle 7 which is 3. So we get the output 5 which is what the sequence also expected. So now we have a pattern here and it is simply that the next number in the sequence that's donated by nt is equal to the sum of the numbers seen on cycle nt minus 2 and the number seen on cycle nt minus 3. Now we understand the pattern and we need to access the information up to t minus 3 cycles. This implies that a design would simply consist of a set of flops which would store the information for t minus 1, t minus 2 and t minus 3 cycles. We would also need an adder which would help us generate the next number in the sequence. Given this information, let's start with the RTL implementation. The RTL implementation of the sequence generator problem consists of the following module definition, an input clock, an Actify reset, and we are supposed to produce this 32-bit output called SEQ underscore zero, which is basically our sequence. Since we know that we need to implement a set of flops to hold the information for up to three cycles, let us first declare the signals which we will be using while implementing these flops. So we will have logic 31 down to zero, Let's call the signal as seq underscore t1, which is basically one cycle delayed version. Similarly, we will have logic 31 down to 0, seq t2, and logic 31 down to 0, seq t3. Let us also declare a 32 bit signal for the output value of the adder. We will have logic 31 down to 0, and let's call the signal as seq underscore next which is basically the next value in the sequence. Okay, we have the signals ready. Now let us implement the flops. For implementing the flops, we will do always underscore FF at the rate posage clock or posage reset. If we are in reset, begin and end. Now setting the reset values is tricky here as we know that our first three numbers in the sequence would be 0, 1 and 1. Also the output would basically be equal to the value of the seq underscore t3 signal. So the reset values for t1, t2 and t3 can simply be seq t3 should be reset to 0. Now we will have 32 tick edge 0. SEQ T2 should be reset to 1, 32 tick edge 1. And SEQ T1 should again be reset to 1. Why? Because this would help us produce the output 0, 1, and 1 for the first three cycles. And for the following cycles, we will use the SEQ next signal to produce our output. And for the case when we are not in reset, we will assign seq t3 to the value of seq t2. Similarly, seq t2 would be assigned to the value of seq t1. And seq t1 would become your next value in the sequence, which is seq next. So this completes the set of flops we needed. Now let us drive the value of the signal seq next. So seq next can simply be equal to the addition of it will be a 32 bit value and it will be equal to the addition of seq t3 signal plus seq t2 signal so this would give us the next value in the sequence finally our output would simply be equal to the value of sequence underscore t3 signal so we will have a sign seq underscore o 31 down to 0 equal to seq underscore t3 31 down to 0. So this completes the RTL implementation for the sequence generator problem. Hope you got a chance to learn how to design a sequence generator.